It's Gatcombe Horse Trials, the first weekend of August, and I'm here with reigning British Open champion Daisy Barkley to, to walk the course this year. Um, what, do, what do riders think about Gatcombe? What, what kind of place and event is it for them? I think this is one of the most exciting places to ride. It's just got an incredible atmosphere and the actual venue itself with the, the beautiful Park Bowl creates a very, very exciting sort of spine tingling feeling when you when you hurtle around the course. This is the most exciting one day event in the calendar. It's, it's incredibly good fun. It's at a good time of the year for running your horses and some some courses are great big rider frightening bowl courses. This is this is a sort of gun to your head fast and furious uh, proper adrenaline rush for me. Fence three, presumably, is the first big, big question. How do you feel coming into this one? What are the challenges? Um, well, the thing about fence three, you've jumped two fairly simple fences. And then as you come into this little area of the course, you're actually almost jumping into the trade stands because around here, you can't really tell at the moment, is it's all shops and tents and, and loads of people. So that's the first thing that will get your horse looking a little bit surprised. And then you make the sharp right-handed turn to this jump, which is sort of iconic Gatcombe. Um, it gets your heart racing, I can tell you that much. You jump a fence, in this case it's the, I think it's called the Stoner School, mm -hmm. and you've got very little flat ground to land on, if any, and then you plummet down this precipice into the wood. So you, you've got to be quite positive and aggressive into this jump, otherwise your horse is not going to want to go down there. But you've also got to not be going too quick because you don't want to go hurtling down out of control. So it's a case of punch them in there the last two strides and then sit up sit back, brace yourself against the horse and let it run down the hill and at the bottom there's an extremely sharp left-handed turn so don't carry on into the bushes. So not much feeling of relaxation when you land because you know you've immediately got to readjust at the bottom to, to get out cleanly. Exactly. This looks like a straightforward exit fence the horse in hand wall but what, what's the issue here? It's perfectly straightforward. Um, you've just got to make sure that the horses are back under control from their gallop down the precipice. Um, but the issue here, there's always one person, maybe sometimes more, will jump the wrong wall because there's usually two or three different sets of flags up here for the different classes. And you've just got to make sure you jump the one for your class. Otherwise, it's the big E and you've only got to fence four. So Daisy, you've galloped away from the horse and hound wall, jumped the Hamptons International round top at full speed, I gather, and then you come to this really technical question at fence six, the Smith and Williamson offset. How would you tackle this one? Um, well, the first bit here is this hanging log, which is at the top of a, a bit of raised ground, a bit of a bank. So as you come up the slope here, you want to just take a little bit of a pull, get the horses back on, on their hocks and then punch them up this little sloping ground. Mm -hmm. Horses tend to jump up steep sloping ground quite well because it just, it gives them some lift into the air. But that's not all this fence is because afterwards we've got two of the most acutely angled houses and they're very narrow. So your horse has got to jump up here and then keep its line to these two houses. And I think they're off two striding distances. You've just got to try and ignore the angle and just keep them between your hand and leg through a little tunnel of your own making and keep them between the flags. So Daisy, you've negotiated the beta lane crossing, hopped up a sizeable step and brush, come galloping across and jump the downward log pile, and then you get here to what people call the barn, but this year is the Hampton International House. It looks pretty spectacular. This is a big old table, actually. It's a good old fashioned, big wide fence and um, it is marginally better the last couple of years than it has been. They, they have had the table right in the middle of the barn on a distance, quite a sort of awkward, I think, three strides and, um, and you've had to really put your foot down to get to the table on a good shot. Whereas at least here, um, it's, it's, it's less confusing with the table on the way out of the barn as opposed to in the middle. But it's a big fence and you don't want to be standing off of it because your horses have got to really stretch to jump that. And on a sunny day, presumably, it's still a very great a readjustment for the horses going into the, the shade of this barn. It's a very big factor, the light and dark effect and, and affecting the horses and your own focus, actually. 
the one good thing is the fence before this, it's a, a big log pile. So at least you would have had your horse really opened up over that log pile. So hopefully it's in, in the stretch mode. Um, it's not gonna land on the back of the table. But um, it, it's, a, it's a good bold fence and it's a classic Gatcombe fence again. It's, it's one, of, one of the features here. Yes. Daisy, you clear that enormous table, a bit of luck, and then you get to fence 10, the Dodson and Horrell crossing, which is um, a modified question from what you've seen in the past. Yes, uh, I think this was pretty much here last year. Um, it's quite a decent upright log with a, a sloping landing down to this wall. So you've got to ride this with the sort of proverbial coffin canter. You've got to have the horse bouncy in your hand, not going too quick, and you sitting up so you're not going to get ahead of the movement. So you pop over this, let it bound down the bank, over the wall. Um, I think they went on a variety of strides to the wall. I think you don't need to worry about that as long as you're, you're prepared for anything. But you do need to be seriously in control and balanced. Daisy, this is the last part of the Dodson and Horrell crossing and a new, a new fence this year. What do you make of it once you've descended that steep little bank and, and hopped the stone wall? Well, it's certainly increase the sort of degree of the test because last year we just jumped parts A and B and there was nothing here and we just galloped onto the next jump. I think here you want to go for the controlled approach. Come down the first two bits with a much more balanced approach, probably off the three strides and then turn around here. I think it's about four strides. It should be four, maybe five if, you, if you're really anchored and um, a lot more control. Mm. Um, as soon as you're over that, you've got to have your eye on this and let your eyes sort of pick up the pick up the next fence but um it is much more controlled and it's going to waste time but it's time you have to waste because you don't want to ruin your chances at this from the dodson and horrell crossing you uh you thunder on over the british venting stick pile and then you come to this fence which is new this year the um Rennepur brushes what do you make of it i think something very similar to this um, was in a different position last year. I think these may be old friends or foes, or whatever you want to call them. But um, this will look even bigger on the day because it's going to be filled with brush. Mm -hmm. It will probably be like a, a big, massive square brush oxer. And then, unlike last year where, where it was fairly level, it's a downhill approach on, I think it's four or five, I haven't walked it yet, to a very skinny brush. And that's going to be a real test of accuracy because once you've You've opened them up over the big, big oxer. You've got to then really hold them between your hand and leg to the skinny brush. And um, it would be an easy place to have a run out, especially as the ground slightly runs off to the right and, and it's downhill. And um, you're going to have that clock ticking in your head still. After you've jumped these two fences, it's a reasonably long run up to two, which apparently quite straightforward looking fences. There's a hay wagon and then a, a feeder but they're both going to be up to height big spreads probably quite upright and then the sort of fence which you can always expect someone just to not respect enough and and come on a really bad shot and possibly fall off so again you know you've, you've got to make sure you jump them because they are big and um and you know that you, you're going to be into the thick of the course so a bit of respect needed <laughs> Fence 16, the Bouvet Ladabe logs, absolutely beautiful fence, wonderful view of the house beyond, but I imagine you don't get much time to look at that and think about that. No, you, you're really trying to concentrate because I think if you start looking at the view, um, chances are you'll make some stupid mistake. But um, no, this, this is a, a nice fence. It's not one you want to come at like a complete loon because it's got a bit of a, a slope on landing and um, you just don't want your horse to have any nasty jumps. But um, it's, just, it's just one which you just need to have a little bit of respect, but it, it is a nice fence. Mm -hmm. And um, it's got a particularly nice sponsor in Bouvet de Dubé. Um, we like their, their sparkling wine. Excellent. <laughs> Daisy, an, ic an iconic Gatkin fence, this one, the, the Land Rover Folly. It's been here since the outset, I think, and it gives you the most spectacular view for the spectators and, and for riders. Um, how do you tackle this one? Um, this is classic Gatcombe, uh, there's always a fence here and, um, and it always claims a few scouts and it, it's slightly different this year, there's a, a big wall table, um, probably about six strides from this double of corners here and um, so you want to have got your horse pretty balanced before you actually jump the table because 
this is when the control starts. So you jump that, get your line to these corners, line them up. They should ride nicely on two strides, but they are asking to be run out at, particularly the second one. I mean, this one I would imagine would cause less trouble than that one, but I'm probably going to be proved wrong. But that one, the ground drifts away, it's all going off to the left, and I think a couple of horses might end up glancing off to the left. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the folly, folly almost starts to push them that way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as it is, when you actually jump the second corner, you do head off down that direction towards the water. But um, it's a fence that, again, always causes a bit of trouble. I actually, I, I think I rolled on the floor off to the second, that corner last year, um, a very sort of feeble little fall. But um, it's always someone, someone gets caught out. So you've experienced both sides of it, great rides and not so great yeah. rides through here. Exactly. Yeah. So, Daisy, from the Land Rover Folly, you come sharply downhill over that fairly hefty, pretty venting trichina, and then up to this countrywide mushroom, which I gather is not your favourite fence. No. Um, I jumped two horses over this last year and, and didn't have particularly nice rides over, over it both times. Both horses did leave a front leg, and we had a little bit of a twisty, screwing in the air moment, um, but they both stood up okay. And I think the fence judge may have had a couple of those experiences from not just me. Mm. Um, it, it is a tricky fence. You come galloping up over this undulating ground and then you have to do no, almost a 90 degree turn up a steep bank, a little bit of flat ground in front of it, and then this mushroom, which most people don't like very much because they have a bit of a false ground line in that the stump of the mushroom does draw you into the base. And um, they are just not popular because quite often you don't get a particularly good jump over them. And I rather hope they wouldn't be here to stay, but they're back and um, we just have to make the best of them. So up over the mushrooms, a sharp right-hand turn. Well, not a very sharp right-hand turn, not too bad. And then you come to the Martin Collins big timber fences here, double of them. How do these ride, Daisy? Um, these are new this year, and uh, they used to be a, a, probably a, a trickier combination. So this is actually much more forward going. Uh, there's a big, big table just behind us and then there's a curving bend to this roll top which I assume is going to be packed full of flowers and made to look even bigger. It's a decent fence but it's a nice bold fence and there's a bit of a downhill landing but it's, it's not too extreme and it's just going to set you off galloping back down into the bowl where as you can see in the distance there's the Burley Court Hotel footbridge and then you come back on yourself jumping towards us over the beta saddle horse this is the most exciting part of the course to ride because it's starting to build up towards the end of the course, the clock's ticking, amazing crowds of people around, around the water. And um, it, this is a serious adrenaline buzz and this is why we all do, do eventing because it's, it's great fun. So Daisy, we're at the Pet Plan Water, which has been modified this year, and uh, you're giving a wonderful sense of scale to how big this drop is. It's the last big question on the course, really, and presumably you're beginning to smell home and that finish line as you tackle this one. Oh, very much so. Uh, this is just the, probably the last big question on the course, and um, it's very exciting. You come galloping around the corner to this, and it's a big old log coming in. It's not the most difficult fence they've had into the water, but as you can see from me standing here, I'm five foot six and it's not that much smaller than me, mm. uh, the drop, mm. so that's a big old effort. Mm. And um, this will obviously have water in it. And um, really at this stage in the course, your horse is unlikely to be too bothered by the water. They, they should have their heads down and be getting stuck in. Uh, but as you jump this, you've then got to lock your eye onto the correct part of the serpent over there. I think it's a bit of a Loch Ness. I think there'll probably be a head. Mm -hmm and uh, maybe a few little spikes around there. But you've got to remember by now, if you have been having a proper go, they are going to be feeling the pinch slightly and you've got to make sure that you get them home safe and sound. But, um, you know, it's, it's still, still quite a lot of galloping to go and most of this last bit is uphill. All uphill. It's all uphill and you may think that you're nearly there, but you've still got to get there mm. and they can get tired very quickly. And um, this is a part of the course, which again is incredibly exciting. They're all picnicking on the hill. There's mm. ice creams and burger vans and, and it's just electric with atmosphere. Mm. It's, um, it, it's a very, very fun place to be. So that is this year's 2011 Gatcombe British Open course. What's your overall assessment of it, Daisy? I think it looks like another fine, exciting, fun course. Um, I think they've done a wonderful job. 
they've used all the terrain in its, in its usual scary fashion, lots of ups and downs and twists and turns. And I think it's going to be a very exciting competition. I'm just very jealous that I haven't got one for the Open this year, but um, hopefully in the few years to come I will. But I wish everyone the best of luck this year and I hope we have a very worthy winner. Well, good luck with your two advanced rides. I hope they uh, go brilliantly and that you come back and uh, a British Open champion again sometime. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.